All right, here we have another one of our multiple mass type problems. Um, and this is, this is basically about as hard as you're gonna see. Uh, I would encourage you to see if you can solve this on your own or at least to set it up to draw your FBD and do your summations. The, the algebra gets a little bit messy, but if you can do the free bodies and do the summations, then you know, you're 80% there. And really that's the physics of the problem. That's what we want. So go ahead and push pause, see if you can do it. Go for it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and solve this. Um, again, first step is to do our free bodies. So we have a force here, we'll call this M1G. We have the tension going back up. Now there's two ropes here, so we'll call this tension one. This one then we're gonna have tension two. Or sorry, this is still tension one here. Um, this one is going to pull back down with the tension 2, so we'll call that T2. And this one's going to pull back up with the T2. Uh, I did say there's friction here, we have some coefficients, so let's just call this FF1. Actually, I guess we can call this, since it's mass 2, we'll call it FF2. And this one we'll call uh, F. F3, force of friction three. Okay, these also have some normal forces. So there's an Fn2 here. There's an Fn3 here. We also have gravity coming down, gravity coming down. Uh, hopefully at this point you can break this up on an incline pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna do that here. Um, this would be M2G cosine. And this one, I'm just gonna draw it here. This would be M2G sine. And same thing over here. This would be M3G cosine. And this would be M3G sine. Okay, so yeah, it looks very, very messy. Um, you may want to um, clean it up if you can, but um, hopefully you can see the basics here. So the next step is basically to go ahead and do your summations. Remember, we are going to define a positive direction for A, so we're going to assume that it's going up this way. In this particular problem, actually, they would have to tell you the direction. So I'm saying that M1 is big enough that the acceleration is going to be up this way. It is possible that these could be great enough, these masses large enough to pull it down this way. In that case, notice if we go in this direction, our friction directions would change. This friction would be up, this friction would also be up. But for this problem, let's go ahead and say that it's moving clockwise in this clockwise direction here. So let's do our summation. So we'll do that very first mass, that's gonna be M1G minus tension one equals M1A. We'll do the second mass, sum of F2. So this one's gonna have a lot of forces. We have T1 is the positive going up. Then we're gonna subtract T2 going down. We're gonna subtract this friction here, FF2 coming down. And then don't forget about this piece coming down here subtracting m2g sine theta that's going to equal m2a and then lastly we're going to do f3 that's going to be t2 going up minus f friction going down 3 minus m3g sine theta that's going to equal M3A. So this is basically, if you get to this point, that's impressive. This is 90% of the problem to be able to set up these equations. Um, the rest is just going to be algebra, and it's going to be very, very messy algebra. If this was an actual AP FRQ, they'd probably just ask you to stop here because it would just take too long to go ahead and solve for this.
But since it's a video, I guess I'll go ahead and solve it. So um, essentially what you're going to do, you're just going to solve for some tensions and then um, and make some substitutions. So for example, using that equation one up there, let's rearrange that. So that's going to say tension one equals uh, M1G minus M1A. And let's take another one. Let's take this tension down here. So this T2, this is equation three, should equal M3A plus friction three plus M3G sine. And then we're just going to substitute both of these into this equation up here. So that's going to give us, let's see, what's it going to give us? Make the T1 subs, that's going to be M1G minus M1A. Then we're going to make the T2 sub, so it's going to be minus M3A minus friction 3 minus M3G sine. Okay, we made that sub, right? T2, we made that sub into here. And then we'll just finish it up. Ooh, I'm gonna run out of space. Minus friction two, minus M2G sine. Equals uh, M2A, what a mess. Okay, so there we go. Look at that bad boy. Let's go ahead and get all the A's on one side. So add this, add this. So I'm just going to put it right here. So you're going to have, um, I'm just going to make a, skip a couple steps. A times M1 plus M2 plus M3. Basically, I added this over there, added this over here to this side, M2A, and then factored out that A. Okay, and that equals, let's just write it, M1G minus friction three minus M3G sine theta minus friction two minus M2G sine theta. Okay, divide by the M1 plus M2. We'll also make the subs for the friction. Remember that's just mu times normal. On this, hopefully you can see the normal is just gonna be the same as your M3G cosine. All right, so here's gonna be our final solution. We're gonna have M1G minus mu M3G cosine minus M3G sine minus mu M2G cosine minus M2G sine. All of that divided by M1 plus M2 plus M3. Bam. Oops, let's get it. There we go. A equals a equals that crazy mess. Again, they would never really ask you to do all this algebra. Probably they might simplify it and say it's moving at a constant velocity, which would you know make A equal to zero, and that would simplify some things. Maybe they ask for the masses. Maybe they make all the masses the same. That would simplify it as well. Or maybe it's even frictionless. All right, so if you manage to get this on your own, very, 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 very impressive.